Uh, what is today? July the 14th. It is National Macaroni and Cheese Day. So there you go. It really is. Go home and have some mac and cheese. Um, we had some fun stuff tonight. Uh, we have two actionable items. We have updates. Uh, and two of the items we're going to kick around tonight is another step in repurposing our parks and listen in and we have bids we have used football agreements uh what i am planning on doing i try to be kind to our guest is uh we'll take care of the the minutes get those approved and then i will have uh, i'm going to step up we have a uh, guest tonight who are going to give us a presentation uh on the, uh, another step to repurposing our parks on uh, the creation of butterfly gardens and then Mr. Trace, where you at there? And Ms. Denny, I'll have you guys give us an update on Parks Foundation. And then we'll get into the meat of LTFL and pickleball bids and all that. So like I said, we get to do the fun stuff and that's exciting. So first off, uh, we have two sets of minutes here, uh, June 9th and June 30th. Um, if there are no additions, subtractions, that need to be made, and thank you, Ms. D, for getting that taken care of. I would entertain a motion. Uh, there's my pen, pen here. Here we go. I read through the, I have no changes. Anyone? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Well, ladies, uh, we have these, Three ladies have been working diligently, and in the 25 years I've been on the Parks Board, if you guys want to give us a little what you guys are working on in the area of Butterfly Gardens, we are all ears, Lizzie. Okay. Yeah, come on up. I don't like to keep, because we got other stuff. Uh, and just to give a, you know, a lead in here, Tom, and we all know Butterfly gardens and pickleball courts and cultural campuses and civic plaza 25 years ago would have been. Oh, yeah, laughed. You know, what are y'all trying to be hipsters out here in Lawrence? Uh, you know that and I know it. So introduce yourself, please. And like I said, I talked to Ms. Missouri. Of course, we spent a few years together at Lawrence North. And we've gone on to bigger and better things. So there you go. So have at it. Good evening. Thank you for uh, letting us speak for a couple minutes. My name is Maria Rusomarov, and I'm a resident here in Lawrence for the past 21 years. And I am also just recently been elected as common council member in District 4. And through that process, see, I have been working with a group of individuals that are highly motivated that I will let them introduce themselves here in a second and then I'll give you a little overview of some of the things we've been working on and we hope that you can help support us and be interested in that. So I'm gonna turn the mic over to my other two colleagues here. Go ahead, Liz. I'm Liz Mazur and I worked with Jeff at Lawrence North. It was always a pleasure to work with him. So. It was sarcasm, and that comment was there for the record. She thinks I'm adorable. Is that, is that, is that under oath? <laughs> Checks in the mail. So um, I live in Kensington Farms, and I was reading the newspaper, the Indianapolis Star, April 11th, and there was an article by the Scrub Hub about how um, the Scrub Hub um, part of the newspaper environmental section, and it was talking about how monarch butterflies are endangered. They're not officially endangered, but they really are, and all sorts of pollinators are endangered, and we can either all throw in the towel, and that's the end of it, because they uh, impact over a third of the food we eat without pollinators, we don't eat, um, or we can do something about it, and we can start planting uh, pollinator-friendly plants instead of having all this green grass, which um, looks pretty, but it's not. It is a monoculture, yes. and it doesn't provide habitat for the pollinators that are so important to us, such as the monarch butterflies. And this article suggested that you get involved in your community and get 
uh, pollinator friendly gardens planted. And so that uh, idea has gotten to the point where it looks like it's very possible that 15 acres of pollinator friendly plants are going to be planted in four different parks here in Lawrence Township this fall. So it's really exciting. So go Lawrence, City of Lawrence. Come on. I don't know how to follow. My name is Allison Cole. I'm a resident of Kensington Farm. Been there for 17 years and probably also have lived in Lawrence for 20. Um, and I'm here just because I'm a dear friend of Maria's who said, I want to do this butterfly project. And I said, well, you need to meet my neighbors because I wish they were here, actually. Um, I happen to live on, on Kensworth Drive, and there's about seven houses there that one of our neighbors convinced us all to plant some um, butterfly happy plants. And um, uh, Patricia is just an incredible advocate and um, so, and then unbeknownst to us, Liz here had gone to our neighborhood association and started a butterfly sanctuary, prairie, in some common ground in uh, Kensington Farms. Um, and then also, Patricia managed to get Forest Glen Elementary School. Oh, wing, that, yeah. Right? So it suddenly seems that um, everywhere I go in the library at the YMCA, just about everywhere, there's literature about the importance of pollinators and there's just a lot of efforts going on and it seems that we're all finally getting together on the same page and um, we met with the um, um, Parks Foundation this morning and asked them to kind of be the host of all of our projects so um, I'm just telling you like the train has left the station so where are we at uh, okay from our seats here, I'm definitely, you cannot be anti this. It's like doing banana peel out in front of the old folks. I mean, just, just don't do that. Bottom line, still the bottom line, money wise, cost wise. I, and the, I know that, that train's left, and I know we're still in that formation process from a strictly a city of Lawrence park wise. And I may throw this at Eric, we? you know, possibly where, how much, and then I'll throw out some other suggestions. My other hat, of course, is with the Fort Harrison Reuse Authority and that world. Uh, I, I think you may have either talked to Heather Mulligan or uh, Aletha Dunstan. Uh, possibly areas, and I'm sitting here uh, talking out, thinking out loud while I'm sitting here. I know uh, a strip of land by the YMCA and Memorial Way there. We are fiddle farting around as what what they may want to do with it. What would we, because we got some tangible, I didn't know if you looked at that area, but I sent Liz out to go look at some areas yesterday, and I didn't know the involvement with the state park. Uh, so I'm throwing some more suggestions from the seat. Madam Council, lady, talk. Well, <laughs> what this group kind of came together, we have about eight folks that are volunteers that really have actually put probably 50 hours or more into this project. And what we went to various entities, including the mayor's administration, and they have committed as a pilot program to start to address this whole idea of butterflies and pollinators and how it affects us on a daily basis via our health, our economics, and all sorts of other things. We have <coughs> convinced some folks the mayor's office in particular, that he would like to commit to four parks, one of which is Lee Park since it's being uh, repurposed currently. So we've been doing some tours about exact locations and working up site plans and so forth. The other park is um, Veterans Park, uh, the Soccer or Rich Art Park, and then also Gen Park. We are coming up with anywhere from 12 to 15 acres. Of course, all of that has to be, you know, specified and get some exact dimensions. But I've put together some general acreage and so forth. And we are working on our budgeting, our funding. We are looking at many different avenues for that. And we feel like we have a lot of good leads. So, and then this morning, um, we just had a meeting with the Park Foundation in which they are highly supportive and would like to partner with this and hopefully be our fiscal agent on it so that we can go ahead and start doing some more funding. And of course, there's also the council budget that we are looking at for some of those 
No pun intended, seed money. There you go. Um, so we are putting together all of that. We have a proposal that's basically an outline of the big picture, the pilot program in particular. And then from this, we're hoping that the parks will be basically an example of how to do it. Um, and then we'd like to go and take that further to all of Lawrence. So maybe someday Lawrence can be known as the home of the butterflies, the butterfly destination destination. So that's what, in a nutshell, is where we're at and what we're doing, and we hope we get your support. And anybody who wants more information, we have a lot of documentations, a lot of written work. Um, we've met with many, many people, so we feel like we're running 500 miles an hour, because we are, um, but we feel like we've got a really good stronghold, a lot of support, a lot of folks just love the idea, and that's where we're at. Real quick. Cool. Liz managed to get signatures of at least 25 residents in our Owners Association to just support even having the monarch butterfly. Right. Yeah. Timeline, Eric, get it in the ground, realistic. He's been busy. He might be tired from all the walking. Yeah, it's good for him. Trying to look, get him lose weight, get in bikini, I, I bikini weight. He's these energetic ladies um, this morning. and we He walked, didn't mention that. He worried him. We walked to uh, Gen Park and, and Veteran, or Gen Park and Lee Road Park and designated some areas. Well, we've discussed in our administrative meeting that the city department would provide the um, herbicide treatment to treat these areas, and then uh, they would come in with their application of the seeds and how they're going to do that work. Realistic. So we have three, well, we're planning on getting three bids. Okay. We've got yeah. two people who have, I want to give them, that they're all a proper bid proposal. Mm -hmm. okay. This is new to me, I'm figuring this out. But we need a third bid and that person is not the absolute best. It's a baby. Um, I know a fine young man who's very skilled in that area there working on bids. He gives me dirty looks on a regular basis because I gave him constant homework. Mr. Murphy, fine Lawrence North product himself. He looks at me with a stink eye, but he does good, very good work. And if you the need assist. We'll get the areas identified. Uh, they'll have the seed ready to go. We'll do the prep work. Right. We have to have at least two weeks before. When that, what would be the drop dead latest to get it in the ground if so it's realistic for, pardon? End of November. Okay, yeah. okay. So. And we already um, did a timeline, mm -hmm. tables, and you know what needs to happen when and what that drop dead date is, okay. and how everything will progress. Got it. And, Go ahead, Aaron. And Liz asked me earlier what the uh, ramifications were, how much savings. We estimate, and these numbers are some old numbers, but anyway, from 45 to $75, depending uh, per acre. Ooh, well, I've been crunching numbers, and I have something to show you how you can cut your costs within five years by 50% by having pollinator gardens, because the initial, just say it's $2,000. Are you ready to listen to this? Mm -hmm. I'm an English teacher, okay? <laughs> 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 Just say it's 2008 to plant the seed, one acre, right? And then um, next year, it's um, mowing the grass twice a year. That's $50. We'll make it $50, okay? And then the following year, year three, it's 50 more dollars. Let's, let, let's round up to $75 to mow the grass. Fourth year, um, $75, the grass has to be mowed twice a year, that's 75, not the grass, excuse me, the plants. And then the fifth year has to be mowed twice a year, that's $70. That's $2,250 for five years, right? It compounds itself, yeah. Um, don't go <laughs> that. <laughs> 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 not if I need a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> so if you pay mowing that grass over five years is twice that. If you average it out, it is half the cost if you put it out in your garden because you're not spending money for mowing the grass 28 times a year, $35 a shot. There you go. And you're not putting herbicides on it. Yeah. And, yeah. 
I'm not treating it. But we're talking just hard cash. Mm -hmm. it, it's more cost Going forward, if you if they say probably Maria uh, work with Eric uh, when it comes to council time, you know, you know, the whole, you know, formal present, the, the dog and pony. Uh, and I would be more than happy to to be a, a sounding force uh, behind that because, like I said, we're going to depend on council and the executive branch as we move forward rebranding when it comes to dollars being spent and where they go. So once you're ready to go with something like that, make sure Eric and I are on board. And I know these guys would speak in support on behalf of it also. So great. Let's go. By your next board meeting, I assume that we'll have some yeah. definite yeah. areas that we're looking at. Got it. And we're just out wheeling around. Yes, sir, Thomas. What kind of habitat are you looking at for the best for these? Well, she's really our expert. We have two experts about the actual gardening of it, but what is required is a diversity of certain types of native plants. And there are also what we like to refer to as butterfly flowering plants, um, sometimes called milkweed, that is also a part of that process. So native plants, um, and she might have some of that data Eric, what's to good share native with plants? you. Put you on the spot. You're the one. That... <laughs> <laughs> She's the English teacher. You're supposed to be the park guy. I know. I'm a break. My husband. The English. The English. <laughs> we need to plant, when it comes to grasses, cider, scrama, medicine, Canada wild rye, Virginia wild rye, little blue stem, prairie trout seed, and then the flowering ones are nodding wild onion, common milkweed, butterfly weed, white pulse indigo, partridge tea, lance leaf coreopsis, pale purple sunflower, mm -hmm. purple sunflower, yeah. rattle snake master, western sunflower, fall sunflower, rough blazing star, dense blazing star, bergamot, and you know, bergamot is those what's going on at the board right now. Right. You know, um, riddles, goldenrod, stiff goldenrod, wild quinine, foxglove, beard tongue, purple prairie clover, Virginia mountain mint, yellow cone flower, showy black-eyed Susan, black-eyed Susan, sweet flower, and smooth aster, right. New England aster, Ohio, oh, yes. spider wort, smooth ironweed, clover's roots, and golden alexanders, which you have to have the Latin name. Zizia aurea. There so, she blows. There you go. <laughs> so some of these you're going to see in flower gardens throughout the, the Lawrence, yeah. obviously. Um, the the black-eyed Susan is Love very it. common. Love um, Susan. The uh, cone flowers, the purple pinks, all, that sort of thing, things that you see normally. So they're not really out outlandish kind of plants. They're flowering plants that are native, meaning they are come from Indiana, so what that means is they're highly resistant to pests, pests and other things, weeds and so forth, because they take care of the work so you don't have to, because they've grown up in this area for millennium. So they take away, you know, part of this pro project is, of course, the economics of it, to take away that requirement of constantly mowing. There is a bit of mowing that's involved in this, but it's a process that actually is three to five years. So we won't see some flowering plants come up, maybe a few in the first year, then the second year, a few more, and then they all bloom at different stages as well in the season itself. So we're talking, looking at this project from now, from we'll start probably end of September and then go until November. That will be our real, you know, hardcore doing the work kind of thing, not just the organizing. And then from there, it'll be next year, then the next year, then the next year. And each, each year will have some sort of phase that's associated with it. And we're hoping that this will balloon blossom <laughs> as, um, as into a project that possibly we could uh, attract more patrons to our parks, festivals, um, folks who are interested in flowers, which who isn't, people who are interested in butterflies, which who isn't. So all of those sort of things we think can be long-term a positive for Lawrence overall. All right. Well, oh, I just had a quick question. If people from the community want to get involved with this, who should they reach out to? We're working on that as we speak, <laughs> literally. Um, we're working on working through the Park Foundation to set up all of our social medias. And so we will have probably a GoFund, 
GoFundMe page. We'll have, we've been reaching out to all kinds of organizations for donations as well as private individuals. So we're tapping every resource that we can come up with. And, and as, the, as the Park Foundation becomes our sponsoring agent, then we're gonna be really able to just push this project faster and forward. How did you choose the areas within the park? It, it was based on a couple different things, one of which, and, and I have a table of all of that, and if you'd like, I can send out kind of this rough draft. Everything's in rough draft because it's evolving as we speak. But basically, one thing we wanted to look at is, is there ample acreage? Because we had to capture our economies of scales. Right, so um, we looked at those parks that had a lot of acreage that was green space that not necessarily being used in a active way, a passive way. So then we also looked at what are the what are the areas that will create. Um, when you talk about butterflies and monarchs in particular, you want to do what we, they call way stations. So you want points that they can go to. So we have the park of Soccer Park, a rich art park on our west side, Jen and Lee in the middle, and then veterans on the east side. So it gives them you know, a, an opportunity. And that's also equitable to our entire community as well. So we looked at a lot of different factors in making some of those choices. And of course, um, some of those were what the administration thought would work out best for us as well. So that was part of that equation. Are you looking at areas that are more public or would it make any difference? Um, yeah, I mean, we, we want to look at those areas. For instance, Richard Park and so uh, Soccer Park, we looked at those areas that are kind of underserved, right. that we don't have a lot of patronage right now. And that park in particular, it just has a lot of green space that really isn't being used actively. So we hope that the way the plans and the diagrams will be constructed is so that you will actually have an ability to walk through the, um, the plantings and we will also include signage so it will become an educational piece and people can learn and understand why this is important. So they'll see the flower, they'll have the picture, they'll have the description, you can walk through and it can, you know, whether for exercise or for you know, just being a place to contemplate. Um, that would be a place article I gave you guys. Schools, and we hope, I mean, we hope that this branches out to all different pieces of our community. So schools, we will start working up through the winter months on how to um, reach out to all our different schools and try to get them to start thinking about their green spaces and their lawns that are not actively being used. So we're gonna reach out to HOAs, we'll reach out to individual businesses, we'll reach out to individual homeowners. We've got an entire array of the different places that have public spaces that are green spaces that we can work with to make them on a smaller scale. Because in this project, we had to look at scales of economy. And we want to do, this is termed a pilot project. So as we invite folks to learn about what this is, then we can encourage through a PR campaign of would you like to be involved as well for your own. And what to plant in your yard, so you have butterflies coming through your yard. But and hummingbirds. I and also wanted to say that I, I would hope that schools would be dropping, so yes. that Forest Land, Molly, or there would be a park right next to the block. And then Sunny Side would drop the And when the land in Carlos is a, um, an environmental school, yeah. environmental yeah. school, Yeah, that's great. Is is this different from wildflowers? You no, know, not really. It wild? it basically is wildflowers. Is that, so we where they've had where we've had like the pheasants forever plantings yes. that are out there at Lee Road. Like that, yeah, exactly. That's what you can, can expect. Yes, yeah. And then we'll add in certain species that are part of the butterfly attractors. So those species will be a part of it, termed milkweed, 
she knows a scientific name, I can't possibly. But yeah, so the, there will be some specific species that will be included, but basically wildflowers. Mm -hmm. Have you talked to monarch beverage? Not yet, but they're on our list. It's going to be a perfect match. It me. sure does. They have benefited from the city of Lawrence. That has um, been pointed out to me more than once. So yeah, they're on our list. Yeah. She's heard me grumble about Anything? certain things like that. <laughs> Anything else? All right, ladies, let's make it happen. Thank you. There you go. All right. Um, before we get to uh, Parks Foundation real quick, uh, Judy Byron uh, could not make it today. They didn't have any fun over at their world today. Uh, they had no water. Uh, they had a directional drilling issue from a contractor that put them offline. Uh, she wasn't having any fun today. Uh, so with that said, uh, Parks Foundation folks, come on down. Good afternoon, Mr. President, board Howdy. members. Nice to see everyone again. Uh, my comments this evening to this group will be very brief, but I would like to say that that is a tough act to follow. Yeah. <laughs> These are uh, energetic, intelligent uh, women, and we had the pleasure to meet with them this morning. Uh, and and I just like to publicly comment that the amount of work that they have accomplished in a short amount of time, just the last couple of months, mm -hmm. is really to be admired. So. Congratulations, and we're thrilled to be part of the project. Uh, so we, we recently had a change in board leadership uh, with the foundation, and I'd like to introduce you to uh, our new board president, uh, Ms. Amber Denny, and defer my time now to her. So, Amber. Good evening, and thank you Good for evening. allowing me to um, introduce myself and talk a little bit more about the Lawrence Community Parks Foundation. Um, first and foremost, um, I am a Lawrence community resident, um, live in Maple Bluffs, um, and my husband is uh, Sean Denny, who is the past president of the Community Parks Foundation as well as serving on um, the city council as an at-large member. So with that said, um, the Parks Foundation was Sean's vision. He incorporated it, created it in 2019, um, back when he was a stay-at-home dad and taking care of our youngest and was looking at stuff to do. Since then, he um, started working for the trustee's office, ran for office and is now a part of the city council. And he was like, I, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> um, so I stepped up to the plate to continue his vision and really bring organization and foundation and stability to the, the Community Parks Foundation. And uh, as a part of that, as of this morning, we did meet with these energetic, fantastic, visionary women um, and have agreed for the Community Parks Foundation to be the fiduciary agent, fidu yeah. Did I say that? Yeah, she did. Yeah. The fiscal agent for, so the, um, commu the Lawrence Community Butterfly Project will be an initiative of the Parks Foundation. So what that means is we will be helping with fundraising. We will be where money's coming in as they procure grants. Um, we will be that, that foundation for them to then, um, and to be applied in whatever grants that they seek. Um, money's coming in. We will help with marketing and communications. Um, we are in the process of updating our website to reflect how folks in the community can get involved if they want to learn more information, um, to work through the Parks Foundation to learn more and get involved and to build the moment momentum, because this is a speed train, let me tell you, that, <laughs> that is working for this butterfly project. Um, and it's a perfect example of what we hope the Parks Foundation will provide and do for the city of Lawrence. Um, it's really hard to imagine what a, a foundation will do because it's very intangible in terms of, of what our mission and our goals are. But when it comes to ecology, education, entertainment through the park system here in Lawrence, that's what we're all about. The Butterfly Project is one that we hope will be of many on that creates that tangible that people can get excited about, can can tap into, and one of the things that we're very proud to, to support. Um, so board development, brand development, and project initiatives are what my vision and goals and plans are for the Parks Foundation. Had a great meeting with Jeff. 
and uh, Mr. Murphy, I can't remember your first name to save my life, I'm so sorry about that, and, and Eric Martin to introduce myself and to really talk about um, the vision and the, the future goals, both short term and long term for um, for the, the foundation. Our goal is to really help the city of Lawrence highlight and um, really showcase everything that our parks have to offer. We know that you folks work on a very limited budget in terms of what uh, is allowed in the, the general fund for, for that taxpayers support, um, but that leaves a lot of gaps. You know, Eric said that the majority of, of the budget goes just to maintenance. So to dream the impossible dream can only go so far because you've only got so much money to work with. That's where we come in. We want to, you know, make those impossible dreams a reality. Um, the Butterfly Project is just one of many that we hope to continue to champion and support and make Lawrence the best that it can be in terms of our parks and recreation. So that's kind of my song and dance and spiel and I'm happy to take any questions that you may have of me or, or Trace or the Foundation. These gentlemen. I have a question for Eric. Would, would we be amenable to signage that indicated sponsorship for some of these areas? Uh, Possibly, I mean, I'm not committed. I don't want to commit you to it, but as long as that. Yeah. yeah. So we allow we allow it for yes. you sports. Yeah. Yeah, as long as it's uh, family friendly. Family friendly. Yeah. Absolutely. That's you know how I feel about that. Yes. Yes. Family. But no, that's uh, the signage like that <laughs> at uh, Lee Road Park on yeah. the area yeah. that we did. That's Thank you, ma'am. I haven't listened to WIBC since you left. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. I do win Abdul's on other than that. Ugh, no. <laughs> well, thank you, ma'am. What's uh, Sean doing for all of his free time, quote unquote? Free time? <laughs> you know, like I said, quote unquote. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Eric, we're going to switch up here. You can bring yourself up here for some board comments or for some well, who, uh, director's comments. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Oh, just quickly, I'll uh, let the board know that we did have a successful uh, July 4th. Uh, it was good to get the community back out, and uh, we had a successful parade uh, fish fry the uh Kwanians, uh picked up the the uh, fry pan and and uh <laughs> and they were very well received uh, the community they actually ran out about 145 um, so they had a very good day uh the carnival did well the food vendors did well so um, actually the carnival's asking to come back next year at a longer stint um and uh, forego their uh, Brazil, Brazil, Indiana, Indiana, and bring all of his rides and everything up here. So it should be a better. What was our take in the till? For we took in uh, just a little over fifteen thousand. Uh, so the total of, for the carnival took in uh, just a little over a hundred thousand dollars. And that fifteen will probably go into support, kind of prime the pump for next year. Right into the. Uh, uh, special event July 4th special event city it's the citywide uh, uh, coffers um, real quickly uh, Brownstone Academy has their event this Saturday uh, I received an email from her earlier today and she's concerned about the weather so she will let us know right Friday evening whether she's gonna and miss McKinney it has She's the one. I tell you what, in the years I've done this, somebody sponsors of an, an event outside of having a Fourth of July committee or Winterfest committee as an individual, she's worked her tail off uh, to do this and has worried. And I hope she gets a break because it's not starting till the evening and the weather doesn't look so great. She's gonna she's gonna wait and uh, make that call. On she's done a evening. great job. Uh, budgets are due. Uh, the uh, the administration asked us to keep uh, uh, an even budget, so we've got some special projects um, that we're going to include in that. Um, and we'll just see what happens. Uh, okay. 
Gene and I have been working on that this week. Uh, it's, they're due by the 23rd. And you don't know when you're hearing before? The, uh, What's the process real quick? Do you chat with Tyler and then go before? Uh, well, we'll chat with Tyler and the mayor and, right. um, and then it'll go to the um, a finalized version will come out uh, on the 25th of August okay. uh, for all city employee of all city departments, and then it goes to the council on the 7th for the initial discussion. They hope to have it passed by the 20th of um, September, October, oh, October. Yeah, that's right. It has to be passed by November 1st. That's right. That's right. That's right. Um, but we've got. Um, uh, primarily, uh, some projects uh, um, we've added, um, you know, our vehicles and mowers and that sort of thing. Which, uh, but we've also have some others that we're looking at and uh, bring those to the attention of the board next month. Okay. Um, then, lastly, the only thing I've got Civic Plaza was um, we transfer transferred uh, from the from the Reese Authority. To the city, uh, we'll probably have something at your next meeting as far as regards to resolution, accepting that property and then a well, memo yeah. of understanding with the Reese Authority about payment for that uh, the development there. So and it's, the goal is still on track. Uh, bids will go are going out right, Young Joe. Yeah. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, the last of uh, August, first of September, and. Mayish next year, possibly. So it is coming. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and we've had our first uh, Winterfest meeting. Okay, uh, that's going to ask that. That's none too soon. So uh, it will be moving out to Lee Road Park this year <coughs> for its duration, uh, and then back to Civic Plaza in '22. So um, again, once we determine where everything goes and we'll I'll let the board know where those uh, items are going in but we'll we do plan that for November the 27th um, that's all I have if there's any questions or okay well real quick I always like to try to make sure since that you're on the record uh, shout outs to RJ and Eric and the boys in the back uh, I did the bended stoop thing for 10 years the day after the fourth. Uh, I always give them a big shout. We are a small, very small department, but I'm gonna make sure you know RJ and the Eric uh, and D, if you saw their parade, it looked like, you know, uh, the plan for Normandy, the invasion with the, where everybody was supposed to go. And I know you screw that up, D. There's heck to pay on the parade route, but high fives also Chief Hoffman, Chief Patalas, Jimmy Hennigan Street Department. Uh, they did a great job. And, uh, you know, the, the plan, I'll be honest, I had some concern about the carnival with what has occurred in Marion County. Screwed up and reversed. Uh, they're going to have to, they did a great job. Now they just have to do a bigger job next year. Um, get a chance the drone presentation of the parade on Franklin Road. Give it a, uh, a look. See, it's on city on the city. Facebook. Yeah, it's just high fives all the way around. I think people were hungry to get out. The Kiwanis folks, uh, you know, the mayor, the chiefs, cooked the fish. They jumped right in, which I thought was good. It's I've been out here for fifty. That's a little snot when the course, but fifty nine of them now and this is as good as they get so high five to you guys like i said you screwed up in reverse you just need to make it bigger next year um you guys did a great job a couple things of concern here though um eric the the weeds under the bleachers at lee road park that is continues to be a menace uh the weeds in the dirt pile if we could those need to, it continues to be a menace uh, I know the street department is moving some of that dirt okay. uh, actually around the uh, government center. They started, uh, they did a... I saw them out there today, but uh, the weeds under the bleachers are a menace uh, and the fencing along uh, left field, actually it's visible from uh, Lee Road. Uh, it really needs some attention. 
please. Uh, the soccer fencing there, we're going to have to decide what we're going to do. The f with various areas where the white fencing are well, is coming they, down. They have some, and again, soccer put that in, so I'll, uh, I'll suggest that they do have some replacement. They have some extra. Uh, it's, just, it's just an eyesore. Uh, there. Football signage, need, those signs need to be fixed. Uh, they're leaning, they're, they're not down. You got the one for Gene Burns Parks identifies it as a park. Mm -hmm. It's cattywampus. And then you have the sign that the LTFL has to identify. That needs some work. And we met with Fall Creek Baseball last week and they had over 300 kids participate in spring ball. Uh, they, Joe, Eric Second, they seem to be happy in the direction they're going. Uh, we continue to transition completely eventually from Lee Road to Community Park, uh, and their registration underway for fall ball is going strong. I know OIO's, you know, they're OIO, they're grinding away out there, but Fall Creek Baseball and We'll get asked about it, so I'll just put it under moving their Fall Creek baseball sign. Yeah. Okay. It was a big one. Uh, and just a side note, only because I know Eric, you took the show wagon up to Tipton, correct? How was your uh, How was the road show and the roadies yeah, you took? Actually, it was uh, uh, Tipton Bourbon Fest or something. That's a, no, I thought That's I in thought. September. Oh, okay. uh, this is a new. This is the same vendor that that does loggers for Lawrence. The uh, they ran the stage from us, and uh, it actually, I, I myself and uh, two other employees went up just to. I wanted to make sure <laughs> nothing happened. They didn't imbibe too heavily. <laughs> no, no, we didn't. It's kind of give you. No, it wasn't. Uh, but it. Um, yeah, we, we got it set up and tore down in um, no. about 45 minutes each way. So. Time to get home, 11.15. 8.30. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that's good. Any questions, uh, things you notice? Go ahead, Mr. Tom. Have we had a chance to work on the skate park? Uh, no, Tom, we haven't. Um, and I've... Um, I need to reach out. I had a Is Judy going to do something with that, Judy? Judy Byron. You know, I know she Maybe talked about a mural. I'll rattle her tomorrow. Up. I mean, I know she's busy with other stuff. So, but I was kind of wondering what the time right. would be on that. Cause, I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of that, but you know, in, in the meantime, yeah, I'll get, survive. How? Yeah, until only the things face away from. Yeah, the road. correct. Yeah. The contractor. Um, um, that built the park for us called me some time ago and and they actually come in and they and it's just paint they just yeah that's all that's all i care about is painting they just they paint the entire seal it again repaint it um that has you know that provides them another blank canvas so yeah we're that's not kind sure of why i was we, hoping that a mural that might, might be a good thing before judy starts her yeah she yeah and if that's the case we'll just we can just paint it um, in the meantime painting over the one yeah might not be so good. anything yeah, yeah. Yeah. What's, what's the deal with the trees that we're taking out the, the tree we took we took out a tree at the third center and yeah. around the city building well, that's the the idea. Of, I know here at the Stair Center or at the Stair Center that was um, unfortunately that tree was in the wrong spot and it was um, it was breaking the sidewalk. Yep. That was the reason for that removal. These again, they were just overgrown and the okay. the, the landscaping. We hope. The idea is that it's a little easier to maintain. So we have smaller perennial beds. Um, turf, I know the the butterfly girls don't appreciate that. All the way. But it, but it, if we come in and mow, we can mow and get out. And it's not. Um, you talk to my wife about that. Not, it's cumbersome. She's all over the place. Yes. <laughs> oh, God, that's right. You can't. It's a little. 
to deal with it. Right? And see you out there with the herbicide. Anything else for Mr. Eric? No. Uh, I do have one other thing. Yep. How, how are we coming on money for maintenance? You know, some of the maintenance needs that we have. We They're growing. Going to be able to make any progress on some of those? Well, things? again, I think some of the, and we're all. Um, the city's getting $11.2 million in the COVID relief package. Okay. So we're, and those have to be um, specified uh, infrastructure improvements. So uh, we probably spend all that. We all oh, we could. <laughs> we've that's we've got our hat in, our handouts. Hat in hand. hat handouts. Hand yep. Yeah, the, so. Um, We'll have some discussion with that and, and well taking in the cultural campus civic yeah, plaza yeah, yeah. yeah if we it's, they're pretty new but you gotta take care of them yeah, all right anything else Good. all right thank you mr eric uh we have two items actionable tonight first one is special uh use agreement <laughs> with the Lawrence Township Football League, LTFL. Uh, a couple of things here. I uh, met with President Antoine Wynn, um, treating them like we did our, I'm gonna use uh, Fall Creek Baseball. Uh, their agreement last year was, and we're getting out of the in-kind business. I'm gonna, we're gonna reiterate that as much as possible. Uh, their payment to the department last year was scheduled to be $3,300. And I, treating them like we did Fall Creek, uh, waived that payment back to the department uh, so they could start the, uh, that with uh, in their coffers. Uh, what we're looking for this year is a fee of $75 per game uh, for LTFL in-house competition. And I talked to the, their scheduler today, and I'll talk about signups and everything. He's looking right now between 40 and 50 games of in-house to be played this year. It's in-house. And then up that ante to $100 a game for LTFL hosted travel and all-star games which at the end of the year could be anywhere from three to five to six of those and allow them to charge admission uh, for non-LTFL families that attend those so they can put that in their coffers. To do that second half, they would have to get a use agreement to host those uh, all-star slash travel league games and of course, they, at that time is when we would allow them to charge admission to those games. The, the use agreement before us, they are not allowed to charge uh, admission to their LTFL in-house competition, and they would have to get a separate uh, use agreement. I'm reiterating a separate use agreement for hosting travel and all-star games and um, paying a, uh, allowing them to charge admission. I talked to uh, their scheduler today, and uh, he will be forwarding after they have their draft uh, how many games, because you don't want to be able to account for what we have here. I will add this commentary. Uh, you football in Lawrence, city of Lawrence, is the only word I can use for it is being cannibalized uh, by the world of travel football and that has been initiated by both our high school programs. I've discussed that already at the township level and the like. Uh, as I've said before, I have a, we have a job here. If those travel teams from outside of LTFL wish to use our facility, I'd be more than happy to discuss a use agreement with them and up the ante on them to use our facility. I've Put that out there but the immediacy here is and i will need a motion to enter into an agreement with lawrence township football league commencing july 14 2021 through november 20th 2021 and and a motion. Wait a minute. so moved second second 
discussion, Mr. Eric? Just to let you know, the, the insurance, the you, Eric. Uh, our um, city legal um, <laughs> has provided some additional insurance and it's in the contract. Uh, LYFL had it in last year's, con in last year's agreement. So uh, they're working actually under last year's uh, uh, insurance certificate. So I believe it was due up uh, sometime this month. So we'll, we'll need okay. a new reissuance of that. But, okay. but they did meet the, the standards set by. Met the thresholds, okay. Yeah. Do we have other youth leagues that were charged by the game? Uh, soccer, we're doing that too. Um, and uh, lacrosse, we're doing that too. So, uh, okay, lacrosse, that's the what well, no, we have a township youth league, we yeah. have a Lawrence town, it's and that, and we have a a uh, gentleman that's doing clinics and and uh, has some uh, some games that we're playing over on the soccer fields that uh, plays per pays per game. Uh, we're the soccer league, we're ch we charge them by the game, mm -hmm. yeah. But, but baseball, we didn't. We didn't this year. That that was the the um, the initial move to community park. We provided the we absorbed those costs so the this year. The plan is to change all these to buy the game. Yes, correct. Yes, okay. which gives us a. Um, it, to me, gives a more fair, equitable readout of exactly the usage yeah, of these. Can, it's pretty simple. You go back and count how many games they played, and, and that's their, their bill for the month. Um, and, and even going down that road, we're, they're still not being, nobody's being billed for the full amount of how often they use those fields, regardless, yeah. be it practices and the like. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it it looks like a large amount, but when we figured, I was about the same. About the same. Oh yeah, is what we. Mm -hmm. And one more time, Eric, the cost the city we we cut, we line, we collect the trash. Why do why do we why do we provide? We pay the electric bill. We pay pay the water bill. Um, we repair the toilets and that sort of thing. So we uh, cut. So we, and we mow. We don't. We don't line, but okay. we mow and fertilize. And you know, gun to head, if someone were to ask, what are those costs for utilities and to cut? If you don't have that, I put you on the spot. I get that, but I will make that your homework assignment. Well, again, uh, mowing per acre it estimates about thirty-five dollars an hour. So that that property is uh, eleven acre. You know, seven acres. Eleven. Say eleven, so that's three hundred fifty bucks every every week we mow. So, um, and then we'd eat and, and utilities. I don't know. I'd have to go back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that's your homework. I'm giving everybody homework assignment tonight. So, because you know when people come back and ask, we have got to give them our bottom line, kind of you know why we're doing this. Yeah, the use agreements for the tournaments. We do that with other. Well, it's just like the the one we had for the um, group that was the ultimate tournament that was using the yeah, Lee Road. That's, that's I think that's a totally different. Well, this it will be the same thing. So, uh, so if um, the elementary football league, the if they have the a Indiana, state associate, if they want to come, want to come have games, then um, then they will pay the city for. I guess why I'm getting at is fairness. Yeah. And I'm not against that, but it's no. you know. Well, and when I. If we're going to do it for one, we need to do it for Correct. And then the big reason I discussed when I discussed with Antoine, it will give them an additional chance, maybe cost them $25 more, but those costs can be, it would, that will be shared with uh, the non LTFL teams because they're a member of an umbrella group, mm -hmm. Indiana U football. And they'll get a chance to recoup some dollars by their, their uh, admission fees. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not against that. I just want right. to make sure that we're creating people roughly right. the same, exactly the same. Yeah, and that's um, the Gaelic 
group that uses the, the adults that use the fields over there at Burns Park. Um, that's the, I think, yeah, a, $150 of. Yeah, they're, they're adult, right? Yeah. It's a little different. But yeah. The, oh, soccer, then if they have tournaments, we're, we would have a separate one with them then mm -hmm. plan. Mm -hmm. But is Cathedral still using our field? Not as right now. They were, I think they were meeting with uh, FC Pride today as we speak. I hope to have some sort of an update by the end of the week. Okay, because they do charge admission. Mm -hmm. Sore spot right now. <laughs> Sorry. We'll just leave it's it just, at that. I'm just leaving it up in the air. Yes, <laughs> it's a sore spot. Yep, yep. Yeah. That's, that's it. And they haven't paid, and that's a sore spot. It's a rock in my shoe, <laughs> not a pebble. We had a motion. We had a motion. I had a second. Uh, we'll vote. All those in favor of entering in a use agreement with LTFL commencing July 14th and ending on November 20th, 2021. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. It passes. All right. Our last actionable item is pickleball bids and where we're headed for that from there. Mr. Joseph Murphy and Mr. Eric Martin. We can come hither. <laughs> Tag team this, we need to. Yeah. Uh, we met yesterday uh, with City Legal and the, and the mayor to discuss um, the two bids that we received. Um, the recommendation that we're going to make for the board tonight is to <coughs> accept um, the bid proposal from. Uh, Brant, I'm sorry, <laughs> from Brant Construction. Um, and looking at the bids, they were the, they were both responsive and responsible, um, and the lowest bids. So uh, the only thing we'll need to add, uh, will that they did not have was their insurance uh, portion, um, but everything else looked in uh, in accordance. So city legal will. We'll draw up a contract with Brant Construction and a resolution that we'll bring to the next Parks Board meeting for authorization and, and uh, notice to proceed. And why did we choose Brant over, who was the other one? Myers. 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 Why did we choose Brant, bottom line? Uh, financially, it was, uh, the bid was $285,000 and $83,800 and, $800 and Myers. Myers was four hundred and forty-five thousand um, dollars, and we're not sure what the until we have a listing of their subs. Really, what? Right. Where the difference is? Okay. Uh, what kind of timeline are we on with this now that we got this hurdle cleared? Well, we expect um, if the nose proceed. Uh, and again, we'll, once we talk to the successful bidder, we'll talk to them, find out what they're, um, but once they get the notice to proceed, construction time is only about 90 days. Right, right. So we hope to get it in yet this fall. Okay. Joe, you want to add anything there, boss? I think Eric covered it. Yeah, the next step would be just to, well, approve the recommendation Eric just made and then have city administration, city legal work a contract with Charles Brand Construction Company to actually bring back to you guys to execute a formal contract okay. probably in August, at which point they'll be able to proceed with their project and then it'll just be a matter of what their lead times are on materials and things like that and mm -hmm. how busy their existing schedule of projects is. Okay. Uh, and those are things we don't know at this time. All right. Any questions? Okay, about a month. Yeah, well, you know what my concern is. What, who's, who's responsible and how long are, are they going to be responsible and then when do we take all the responsibility for anything that goes wrong? And that will be spelled out in the contract. And I'm, I don't know what the f industry standards are, but I'm sure there's something that our city legal will put in that contract, whether it's uh, one year, five years. Um, we'll is that, that's the key question. For correct. Me. Correct. I really do have questions about stability. Stable that is out there, and, and so do we. And that's do, do, does 
Do the contractors understand that? Or? The, the contractors were, had the opportunity to, we marked it out where, you know, at, in close proximity where it was going and they had the opportunity to, there was an aerial included in the, in the contract. So they, we hope that they made a site visit. We don't know that don't until we actually. come back with change orders on business. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe, real quick, uh, Miss Norman, you were asking monies that can be made from pickleball we, we in our, before the meeting began. Joe, I referenced how does Fishers, Parks, or City make some cash off their doings? Yeah, so there, there are three pretty clear revenue streams with pickleball facilities. Uh, obviously, the primary use of the facility will be just public recreation. It'll be open unofficially 24 7 we'll have official hours right. that we observe as a city just to be appropriate with the use and consider the adjoining landowners but there will be specific times that we and I, I would suggest we carve out during the week especially in the mornings for both private lessons as well as league play um, and then there's also a pretty lucrative tournament industry that goes on um, in Indiana central Indiana especially that we can tap into where there are existing organizations out there that organize and host tournaments and I'm sure would pay a pretty good chunk of money to the Parks Foundation to, or not the Parks Foundation, I apologize, the City of Lawrence Parks Department uh, to, to rent our facilities for a weekend, for a week. Got it. Um, what was I gonna say? Kind of like if we were to rent out to a youth sports activity to And to get to it. Point, that would be a, a, a contract that we would bring before you before anything was ever approved. We have a meeting, not this next Monday, but, the, but in two weeks with uh, the Central Indiana Pickleball Association. Uh, lives in, lives here in Lawrence. The president lives here in Lawrence. Uh, Who is it? Uh, some guy called me. He works over a part at Homecraft. I just uh, I uh, meet so, this guy. <laughs> so Marcus is, uh, uh, but so they said that there's uh, money's available. Uh, uh, through their through donations, through their uh, organization, and also there's grants. I'm going to go ahead, and we don't want to drop the ball on it, but put it on the to-do list is find out who gives lessons. And I don't want to wait till the last minute, but find out who comes out and gives lessons to folks. And there's a job for you. No. It might be a natural. To sign up for yeah. <laughs> No, I went and got my. I'm looking at another back surgery. I mean, a wheelchair. But trying to things built. Uh, there is no actual move on our part tonight because there is no. We would contract. ask that you would um, approve acceptance of the bids. Acceptance of rant construction is, and uh, and ask that the city legal draw up a contract and a resolution. What he said. I do have one other question. Yeah, will access to the site be from our parking lot or from Lawrence North? Or Lawrence, I mean, Ball Creek Valley. Ball Creek Valley. I, it probably it will have to be from our lot. Yeah. Than that. I mean, yeah. Theoretically, it will yeah. be. Yeah. Will there be a way for people to park and people park over there anyway? Yeah. That is going to have to be a part of when they come out and look at the site design access. I'm going to leave it up to you guys how imperative that is, but I'll be honest, Fall Creek Valley won't be too, and I can't say I blame them, uh, won't be too hip uh, people accessing them. Oh, and we're starting our Winterfest. We'll start setting up in early November, so mm -hmm. hopefully there's the asphalt's down and the majority right. of, the, of the work has already been completed. But um, I would imagine we'll probably add, utilize the access road that goes to the tower, the, the phone tower, right. and make a temporary access back that direction so it doesn't. In reference to, just give us so we can have where it's going, in reference to, I'm using the concession stand, in reference where the concession stand is out there, where will the pickleball courts go in relation to that? North and east of that. Okay. We're going to got it. get us far uh, north as we can. Got it, got it. So it'll be actually closer to Fall Creek Valley's parking lot. Uh, no, no. Not, not so much east as it will be. North. We're concerned about getting it to the northern part of the site. 
anything okay. south of, we want to stay away from anything south of the concessions facilities. Right. Okay. There, there is a little in, little hill there. We want to get on top of that crest. Tom. So it's uh, about where that um, the diamond uh, or the third baseline would have been on that diamond. Okay. And Tom, there, there will be no official connectivity between the that's where I was going Joe kind of walk through that you know exists on that tree line between Lee Road and Fall Creek there's going to be no connector trail that we're going to establish that'll just be a something that probably will occur naturally but we're yeah. not beyond what's already there okay, so we're not going to advertise we're not going to directly encourage you know we did park over that's good in fact yeah. we'll do the opposite we're, we're going to create a a fully paved walkway from the okay our, our parking lot right to the trail or to the pickleball yes. facility thank you just a real quick question, um, like as we're talking to people in the public who are excited about it, what's a rough time frame to tell them like when we'll have working pickleball courts, I guess? Or, I know it depends on things. Spring 2022. I'd say we could probably have a much more firm answer on that once we have a Get the contract drawn oh, yeah. up, you're sure. right. It's, it's, I'm not in the construction business. I can't even speculate. They on put a bid together last year. Right oh, yeah. yeah well, the, the asphalt, generally the batch plants closed it's true. Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anymore, there's so much construction, they're staying yeah. open almost year round. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that, a lot of that will depend on when they yeah. can get the asphalt placed on the, uh, we're Do hoping that it'll go pretty quick, actually. Remind me again about how we're paying for this. It's just magic. I don't know. Uh, you do. <laughs> no. Joe Murphy got this little printing machine in his little office. A great. It's, it's um, what we used to call the cum cap account. Uh, so it's it's cumulative monies that the city has for for uh, you know, uh, for you know pro or for projects, capital projects outside of the stated budget. Right. Right. Correct. Um, Our controller has assured us that it is to be fully funded. So I think, yeah, so you don't need to, I don't think that's the to. former Mr. Fenwick and now Mr. Tyler. They have given us full assurance. The last time some of it was coming out of our budget. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that's better. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, you know, it goes back to, you know, I, I've referenced it a couple of times, that article on quality of place. I keep going back to that. And you can't really put a price tag on quality of place. You know, you know how that works. You just can't do that. And I'm glad we've had the foresight. Uh, you know, and again, I this. think just like the Monarch Butterfly, right? I, that's bringing, that's getting momentum. I think the pickleball courts will. Mm -hmm. We've even talked about in the uh, lighting proposal that we. You know, if the case ever we have to expand and backlight, right. so we're going to order additional. Um, the pole sizing will be that to accommodate additional lights if we backlight to another court. Um, and especially with residential development that's coming online here out at the fort and with the opening of the Otis apartments, and we do have some connectivity uh, to get there. And I know businesses here on the Ford, restaurants and the like, are excited to see uh, to see that come. And it would be heavily used. Yes. And the lighting that we've specified is not, it's directional, so it, there's not a lot of bleed off into the neighborhoods. I think of the, like, L, LNLC football lighting. I mean, it's there on the field, and it's real dark behind those, directly behind those lights. Um. So. And uh, the the lights won't come on after a certain. I was going to ask. Time. Okay, yeah. Uh, they'll have a motion sensor or a or a push button or something to light them if you go out and want to go play at nine o'clock at night and it's right. dark. Uh, but they will go off and and, and cannot. Yeah. Got it. Come back on. So. Anything else? All right. The motion before us is acceptance of the Brant. Bid for construction of eight pickleball courts out at Lee Road Park with the addendum of city legal working up a formal construction contract to move forward. Uh, That's the motion. Oh, we haven't had a motion. <laughs> there you go. So moved. I thought we had one. I thought we, sorry. So moved. <laughs> Second. Second. All those in favor? 
Hi. 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 There you go. Good job. Wait, let me. Oh, go ahead. Would it be helpful if we had a special meeting to speed this up? Yeah, that was going to be on my thanks. Tom. Okay. I was. Let's see the legal get there. Caitlin's good. She's quick. Yeah. yeah, she's good. It'll be yeah. It'll be a question of how quickly she and then Charles Brant's legal team can get together. And okay. Draft a contract. But if they're able, we I'm sure we could do that. When's our worst schedule to meet again? When August the like tenth. So yeah. We'll see if it's even if we have like the MOU and the other documentation for the Civic Plaza. If we could kill, I'm just saying if it's ready to go, let's clear the deck off of stuff when we get them. We'll definitely come to you. If it's ready, I think we'll be yes, ready to do that. Yeah. yeah, let's roll. Anything else, kids? Thank All right, it's a good night. My Orioles don't play, so we can't lose. Everybody have a good evening. Go get some macaroni and cheese.